Hello, this is Shante from Brown Sugar Talks, coming to you on Freedom Friday, Freedom Friday, and today my topic is books. <laughs> they make me feel so sexy. They make me feel so sexy. Okay, so anyway, last year was like. I was just, like, going through it. Like, sometimes I could afford stuff. Sometimes I couldn't. Sometimes I could afford stuff. Sometimes I couldn't. So, sometimes to alleviate this stuff, I keep certain things, like, audible. It's, like, one of those one things I te- like I keep. Also, art of education. If you are a art teacher, art of education is awesome. Like, I'm so happy that I subscribe to art of education. Knowing I can't afford it. But still, like, I'm so happy I kind of subscribed to it because it's just, like, it had, like, so many ideas. And then it also gives you oomph for yourself, too, because it it was, like, I actually was doing some of the stuff. And then I learned new stuff that I didn't know. So I was like, yay, yay. So, anyway, I love doing these books. I still got to give it out to Bartunde, uh, Thurston, and uh, Tomahasi Coates. I think that's the last time I ever did this was, like, when I read their books. Um, I think I've talked about these books, like, during the year. All American Boys. I like this one because it was, like, two men who were one black, one white. If you come from an area that's mainly black and white, it might end up being something you want to look at because relationships or whatever between black and white people was like seen in so many different ways and abundances i was just like at the courthouse um don't i'm not a criminal don't ask me why but i was there and um I, you know somebody this woman just kept saying well i date black guys it's like okay well i'm happy that you do like um i know i did a podcast i mean not a podcast a video on it and i'm not saying that i'm against it because i date white guys i date his i like date a, like I, I have dated a lot of races of people so i'm not against anybody a black and white couple i'm not what got me when i was doing my when i was like researching for my podcast and stuff is that i found sites or whatever that you know we can't subscribe to i don't know how i got subscribed into this site but I saw it on Facebook. It was like a group and it was just like a group of black men that just had all these messed up memes for black women. And it was like, okay, this is some negative stuff. Like I did not even know. I don't know why it just never crossed my mind. It just never came across my mind and black men would hate black women that much. So it was like, okay, well, since they dated a woman of a different race, it's like, now let me put you down, which is not the truth. Like, even though I dated white guys, I'm not going to say that all black guys are awful and disgusting. And, you know, like, I don't have all these things to say because depending on what race and who the person is, you're going to still have the same issues as because people are human. You're going to still have the same issues with a black guy that you're going to have with a white guy. You're going to have all those different issues. It's just like sometimes culturally or education-wise, sometimes you relate to a person better. Sometimes you're not related at all, but you just end up dating. Like it's a reason, a season, a lifetime. I heard that before. So it's like you just have to um, realize that I don't have anything against uh, black guys dating white women, nothing against it because I do the same, like I do the same thing. If the choice was that I was to date another white man, I would be okay with that. Um, dating a Hispanic guy, they thought he was white because he was a lighter Hispanic guy. I think like, cause I've always dated like Guatemalan and, um, a Salvadorian man so it's like I never really I've been I wasn't a Mexican guy but I just like no so Guatemala El Salvadorian so it's like um their skin is like some of their skin is lighter um don't know why because they kind of like close to the ocean but their skin is lighter so you would not know unless they spoke like if they were Hispanic or white unless they spoke so most people would assume that he was white so it's like okay well when you're going through things like that you start to relate to thing to people and their life, or whatever. So going through this, it's like seeing that um, these two guys, because most of my friends too ended up being white girls, you know, because of where I lived. So it's like you would want to have this type of book with your friend. Like I don't know if they're friends or not. I think they became friends over time, but it's like they wrote the book from their own cultural perspective.
Because even though my friend is white, her mother reminded me of Roseanne. Their house was completely nasty. Like, it was like in, you know, it smelled like cats. It was, it was just bad, you know. And so it's like two different perspectives. And it's like, how did she see her house? You know, that's what she grew up at. It was just always junky, you know. So how did she see that as, as opposed to how I saw it? Um, and then I went over to my other friend's house. And her house, they had a lot of animals. And you wouldn't have known, you know. So, um that's the whole thing and it's i don't know and then being inside of a white sorority as well like just like seeing how people move and you know whatever so it's like you just start to see okay wait a minute i don't know i wanted to hear the book just because it was like i said from two different perspectives because usually i go through a lot more than they do and they they telling me their stories and i'm looking at them like bitch do you know what the fuck i would you know like would you want to be like no i had it hard but it's not it's not a, a game of like okay who had the hardest but it's like you complain about that bullshit you know like you ain't you ain't been through shit you know so anyway um that's the whole thing and in a book that's kind of how it is too so I really, really enjoyed that book, All American Boys. Um, Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling. Now, when her show first came on, I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, I loved her so much because, like, at my, I am, I could, I can't be shallow. Like, I really can't. Like, oh, my God. Like, it's like certain things I become shallow about. Not the same things all the time. When I was single, it was like, oh, my God, I cannot wear the same outfit in the same month. Like, I would not wear the same pants or skirt in a month. Like, I would actually rotate that shit out. And my closet was so full of stuff that it my hanger actually broke. But I also worked at the mall, and I worked for Ann Taylor. So, guess what? I got pants for, like, 5 and $6, sometimes $3. Like, I got clothes for so cheap. And I was, like, at a smaller size, too. You know, even not being at a smaller size, sometimes Ann Taylor also has sales for, like, 70% off. So... I don't know. And then you also get a 20% discount on top of that. Like you get a discount on top of whatever it is. So I just had like a lot of clothes. So it was just like I related to this girl so much. I related to her, you know, as far as her show goes. But then when she started talking and told me about her life, I was like, I cannot relate as much as I thought I could because she herself is like one of my sorority sisters that just like, you don't have a clue about life, you know, and uh, the real life, you know. So, um, I don't know. I, by the end of the book, though, because she gave so much good advice, like, she would stop and give advice about, like, real stuff, like, getting your clothes fitted to your body and stuff like that. Like, I mean, going to the tailor, I was like, huh, okay, I like you now. You know, like, she gave big sister advice. So I really kind of appreciated her for that. And she went through racism and stuff too, but, you know, it was just like a different, it was just a different type, you know. It's just a different type because it's a different stereotype for somebody to think you smart as opposed to thinking that you're dumb. And so it's like, Cause I've always had like, oh my God, listen to, you know, me and oh God, her voice, you know? So it's like, okay, well she's, it's always some kind of connotation with that on top of being a black woman. Come on. You know? So it's like, they put you down into you a freak and you, you know, your voice and let me touch you and treat you bad. And you know, it's like never something where it's just like, oh my God, listen, you are so awesome. You know? I'm not going to say it's never because the people who do recognize I'm awesome, they're pretty cool too. So I'm just like, I really like this book. I did. By the end, I liked it. By in the middle, I was like, oh, Lord God. But she kept me going. So I was like, okay, let me just finish the book. And it wasn't like, oh, let me finish the book. I actually want to finish and hear the rest of what she had to say. So I, I really did like the book. I'm judging you was such a surprise because this reminded me of Baratunde. I just really liked it. Not just like compare her to somebody else because she could have wrote her book first and he could have wrote his second, but, or they, you know, whatever. I hope they talk because they both have such good books as far as like black culture goes. And I really liked it because like also in school like I was just like a multicultural person I wasn't that person that just like sat with the black people like I said with everybody like it's like my group had to be like diverse 
and they had to be funny diverse like it wasn't even like i had people around me the people that stayed with me were people that were diverse in all kinds of ways you know and i had a very strong opinion so it was like okay if i had an opinion about something i actually said it. and if you couldn't understand that i said that to you then i don't know something wrong because okay because i'm a nice person but let's say you do something that's just like not like i'm gonna be like hey that's not right like what you did was just not right and this is why you should did this and it should have been better than this but that's because i'm your friend like it's like i'm telling you that and for the people who knew that i was their friend if i got like that with them it's like okay and after i get through talking about it it's over like i don't have anything else to say about it like i've already told you already to give you my opinion and so that's it like i'm letting it go but as far as like that person changing or doing something if it affected me more I would probably not be their friend, but if it didn't affect me at all, I still remain a friend. Not to say that it was like little things. It had to be something huge for it to happen. So, anyway, I'm judging you. I I was just like into this story so much because there's so much discrimination against people, like in so many ways. In so many ways, it's mean and honoring, and I just don't like it. Like, I'm just not a person that's going to be on your side. You make it fun of African people. You make it fun of Indian people. Like, I'm just not that, I don't know, I'm just not that happy about it because sometimes if it's a person and they by themselves and they can't handle themselves, it's almost like you are putting them in an awkward position. Now, if it's like a comedic situation or something, I mean, I don't know, but either way, you put them in an awkward position, it's everybody don't want to be there. You know, everybody don't want to be in that awkward position. So, I don't know. I just, I really, really like this book. It was funny uh, and relatable, you know? It's like, oh, my gosh, she said that, you know, that's how I feel because sometimes we don't say it. So, I say, oh, my God, she said it. And she said it, and she says it. She is so cool. Uh, Lovey, uh, Ajaya, Ajayi, and she probably said on a book, you know, everybody she, everybody cannot pronounce her name, but I would like to get it right. But wonderful, wonderful fun. I also say follow her on Instagram, too, because she is fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. Okay, I cannot get over Bob Shay. So, every year they do this thing where they're like teachers. Well, it's a teak. It's a, a te- it's a Texas essential skill. Uh okay, knowledge and skill. Oh my god, do not test me again. But anyway, Texas essential knowledge and skills. So in one of the teaks, the children for reading have to do a study of the same author and compare the books. I don't think Bob Shea knows this. So during my reading year, I was like, fuck Kevin Hinkies. Kevin Hinkies, I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean it like I love you, but everybody just overuses you because it's so easy to get to Kevin Hinkies. It's like so many lessons for Kevin Hinkies. I'm going to do this thing where I do Bob Shea. Bob Shea was a writer for Saturday Night Live. And he has like a series of books for children. He and he the books are actually so freaking cool and funny. The illustrations are good. Um, uh, one book though, it was like the book about the cowboy. I liked it too. But I was trying to do a, like a series um of, of um books, but he is kind of hard too because he doesn't always have the same. He didn't have the same characters, but just look up Bob Shay, and it's like. They are the cutest, cutest, cutest books, and they actually have so many good stories. And okay, and I'm so into fucking you. Like, okay, wait a minute, let me not say it like that. I am so into unicorns because it sounds like fucking unicorn. Like, I don't know, no unicorns to fuck. I'm sorry, but anyway, like, um, he it's like he is just this book was the greatest to me. So I do buy books with unicorns. It's another unicorn book that a kid gave me to read i bought it but i i guess i'll do it in another review but it um uh, this one is awesome and i like bob Shea as an artist and i and i challenge any other teacher to try to do a a look at his books or a study of his books because they also relate to boys more too like it's almost like it's for girls and boys so that's the other thing is like if you ever notice like there's no boy books for pegasus and there's no boy books for unicorns so this is like a boy book for unicorns too so anyway um unicorn thinks he is pretty great that's the name of the book by bob shay and also it has a goat i love 
goats. They are mean, they're sweet, they're selfish.